but uh, you guys sort of kept it close until made it midway through the third quarter. Where do you feel like that game got away from you guys? Well, well, kudos to them. I mean, they played tremendous. I mean, um, as I said, you know, they they were in first the whole season for a reason, and uh, they're just. Um, big, strong, athletic guys, and um, you know they're tough to play against. And um, um, you know we weren't we weren't on point. Um, I just thought they just did a better, better job. They played a little bit harder than us uh, across the board, and um, the three ball got involved. And obviously, they shot uh, you know a hell of a percentage from there, which is always the great equalizer um, in uh, basketball. Now, so um, it's one game, and we regroup, have a few days off, which will be nice, and then um, we'll be back at it. Obviously, you have to rewatch the tape, but the three balls, the, the shots that they did get, were you comfortable with the way you guys were contesting and getting hands on those? Well, the ones with Chris, you know, uh, he's going to take a variety of different shots. Some, uh, for most people, probably aren't good shots for him. They're always uh, kind of um, in his rhythm of, of his confidence level of, of seeing the ball go in. And so once he sees the ball go in, he's, he's, he's t quite tough. And so uh, with him, you just you kind of live with what ends up doing and try to contest the best you can. And I thought we had a few good contests on him, but it's just the others that start to get involved. And, you know, like anything else, uh, once the ball starts to go in for a variety of different reasons, um, confidence grows across the board and, and guys start to make some extra shots. And again, um, you know, we weren't very good really at any category other than, um, you know, trying to be as competitive as we could. How do you feel your group handled the physicality and athleticism of, of the team? Yeah, I mean, I thought uh, in general we're usually, you know, quite physical ourselves. I think um, that, that's definitely not an excuse, but I think uh, there's a slight uh, fatigue factor with us of just uh, the travel coming all the way back to Perth and then having the day and then turn around and come here. And um, it is what it is, and it's not it's not that big of an issue other than the fact that uh, we were much more bouncier uh, in Perth and a little bit more lively with some rest uh, in general throughout that series. And then the back-to-back -back game there, um, I thought our guys were on point, but um, they played great. Will you have a quieter week in the next few days to, to get over that? Thing? I'm going to have a wonderful week. What about your players? Do you give them a lighter They're absolutely going to have some time off, enjoy their families, enjoy back being in Tasmania for a couple of days, be with their families, um, and then we'll get back to work on uh, Wednesday. It seemed like Jack was contained to an extent to start the game, but he got a bit loose toward the yeah. fourth quarter. Do you get some confidence out of that, knowing that he found his spots a little bit? Yeah, I think, like anything else, uh, um, um, you know, this is kind of a little bit of a chess match of seeing what they're doing and what we have to adjust to and vice versa. And you just kind of go through that. And um, the players obviously make their adjustments and see how they're being guarded during the course of the time. And, um, you know, the video work and stuff that we'll be moving forward with to help them um, try to uh, take advantage of some things will be good. And, and uh, you know, I thought Jack, you know, competed and played, played hard. It just obviously... Uh, across the board, we had no one really that I think was really outstanding in any particular order. I thought Drimmick was the most aggressive and the most probably lively of the group. Do you look to guard tail edge and fashion going in game two? Because it looks like you, you played a lot of hard defense on the on ball at the start. Um, do you look to guard tail edge differently? I haven't seen the video, so I don't know what to tell you right now, but I don't know. Do you also need to find more shots to, to guys like Jack McBain and Norton Doyle? Well, I'd love to get him more shots. Um, you know, they, the, the shots chart here across there was fairly equal for those three or four guys that used to shoot the ball. They didn't shoot it obviously particularly well, but, um, you know, shots are the shots. I mean, I don't think any of those guys shot more than 12 or 11 shots themselves, and we had a couple guys shoot 13 times. So uh, we pride ourselves on moving the ball and, and uh, you know, using our execution to try to get uh, guys advantages, and, and um, uh, the shots will be there. When uh, when they when they're open, um, how impactful was the um, you know, the foul trouble for, for Will uh, when you lose the um, rebounding camp off your day? Uh, I mean, he's impactful, obviously, that, that, that he got some foul trouble. But, uh, you know, uh, I thought uh, Achul was, you know, fantastic and just in general with his energy and stuff. And he puts a lot of pressure on you. So uh, it wasn't wasn't helpful to have him with a few fouls, but um, is what it is. And is it important to get Jordan uh, going for Friday? Um, After a quiet game, said it today. I mean, yeah, I'd love to have him get going. I don't. What would you like me to tell him? So how, get how going. You, um, I suppose how do you get <laughs> you know, your point guard uh, you know, up and up and running for a, for a big, um, you know, well, huge game game two in front of. Uh, uh, there's no one person on this team that uh, we need to get up and running necessarily. Again, this is a collective group of guys that play together for uh, the last three years. Most of these guys together, and then the guys that we sprinkled in and. Um, this is not a one-man show or any of, of that nature. And if a guy has a bad shooting night, he has a bad shooting night. I mean, 
Uh, in the beginning of the year, I think people were trying to crucify the kid because he wasn't shooting the ball at some kind of percentage or not. But um, it's what it is. I mean, he'll 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 get his shots, and you know, hopefully they they go in for him next next game. I mean, what do you what do you feel like it was that allowed Melvin, especially toward the end, to run away with this one? Well, I think it was just maybe the, the wear down factor over the course of the game and how disruptive they were. Um, I guess you can look at our assist number being 13 and um, you guys are talking about can we get more shots for different guys and essentially they, they were able to push us out of what we wanted to do and Scott said we're good when, when, the, when the ball moves. Um, obviously we didn't hit a couple so but um, those two factors are probably reflective of that assist number but I mean we did take care of the ball, seven TOs, um, but I think it was just the course of 40 minutes and what they were doing. Do you feel like there's something you guys can do better to control the pace of the game? It seemed like they did a good job of speeding things up. Yeah, I mean, we still got to keep the ball hot. Um, we got we got to maximise that shot clock at our end of the floor, and um, we've shown over the course of the season when that ball's hot, that's how we control the tempo of the game, and um, obviously that's... I mean, t teams try and take us out of that, and we continue to find ways to um, to be productive in that area. Um, so, yeah, it's just back to the drawing board and um, find other ways to keep that ball moving and, and uh, make them play that full shot clock. Scott, a series doesn't really start until the home team loses. Uh, can you describe the excitement you have getting in, into Tasmania and in front of that MyState Bank Arena crowd? I, mean, I can't describe it because if you're not down there and you can't feel it uh, from a from the TV, but the, the you know the place is obviously electric and excited to play in. And you know the thing that's great about this, I think the visiting teams love to go in there and play in that kind of atmosphere. If you're a player, you want to be in you know tough buildings to play in, and our building will be excited, and uh, our fans are um, around the state are just excited about the group and uh, getting back here again, and it uh, should be an exciting night. Is there any concern with uh, Marcus and? I haven't talked to any of those guys yet. I think Fab, uh, he well, he walked back uh, in the back there when he came in, and and Marcus, I just didn't play. I think his shoulder was fine. I just didn't play him. Is there a reason why I think Magna got in foul trouble? You put Fab in instead of Marcus. This is something you saw out there. I uh, just felt like uh, you know Fab was um, doing a much better job defensively down there around the box a little bit and, and being a little bit more scrappy at, at times. And um, with Mags being a foul trouble, I think Fab needed to get some minutes under his belt too to just not throw him out of there cold and. Um, I've used those three guys uh, multiple ways during the course of the season. Um, quite confident in all three of them.